All right, guys. Did they tell you you guys would get noisy? Now to the good stuff. I was asked to speed it up <laughs> so that uh, somebody can get out of here because uh, they need to get out of here. So, um, so I don't mind. I have a meeting right after this. So um, I'll have to run to that meeting. You guys can go, go by the door and see if you can make me laugh. Anybody who can make me laugh during the meeting itself? Extra credit? <laughs> I think it's RI222. <laughs> you going to try to make me laugh? Watch me get in trouble. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I'll just say you're Dr. Song's students. <laughs> Look at Dr. Song, your students are outside. What are they doing out there? <laughs> Two, two, two. Oh, it's you don't want to go. It's, there are more boring things than pre-calculus. Strategic plan of the math department. <laughs> Not good. Not fun. All right. So um, again, I'm just moving along the web assign, showing you how to do the problems. Is this working out okay? I, I want to do a survey, but maybe not today, just to see. If I did Survey Monkey and you felt like you were having problems, you could just sur um, answer and tell me anonymously if you're having problems or you want me to slow down or change anything. Um, I usually take student feedback very seriously. And if something I, there's something I can't change, I'll tell you why so that at least you know. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll do that electronically so it won't take up class time and there's no, you know, I can't read your writing. It's all electronic. Um, so this is a web assign problem. Hopefully this format is working. And you're supposed to find all the solutions to this equation. Um, and it's very similar to the cosine one I showed you the other day. The only difference is it has a cotangent in it. And the cotangent presents a problem. And the reason it's a problem is that most uh, TIs and most calculators don't have a A cotangent or cotangent inverse key. If you have uh, and one of those older scientific calculators, they have A cotangent or A tangent. That's the same thing as tangent inverse but they don't have a cotangent key. So what do you do? First step is to convert cotangent to tangent. Tangent and cotangent are related to each other. She's, she's checking. <laughs> I went and had to look at a, a picture of a TI to see if they did or didn't because I suspected, kind of remembered last semester that it didn't. So how do you do this? Well, cotangent is cosine over sine, which you know from the red list. And it's really funny, I'm watching The Blacklist. That's actually a good show. And I think it's a good show because there's a good actor in it, but the, the plot is awful. Like, 30 people die every time. It's like a <laughs> Terminator 2 every time. <laughs> um, so you have cosine over sine, and you get 1 over sine. That's really 1 over sine over cosine. I'm freaking you out. I know I'm freaking you out because I have a little note here to tell you why I did that. Usually, usually you're supposed to invert the denominator and multiply. So usually you're going in this direction. You're starting with this fraction and then changing it to this fraction, right? You invert that denominator and multiply and you would get exactly this. I'm asking you to go in the other direction because sine over cosine is really tangent. So cotangent is really 1 over tangent. You can either just remember that or recreate it like I did. It's really, it really takes two seconds to recreate that once you know the sine and cosine changes. So that's the first thing. You want to represent cotangent in terms of tangent. Why? Because you don't have a cotangent key on your calculator, but you do have stuff for a tangent. You have a tangent key. You have a tangent key? See, you got hi-fi calculators. So here's where I'm at. I've changed the problem. I've replaced that cotangent x as 1 over tangent x. That's all I did. Second step is to cross multiply. Remember this from uh, the Red Hawk Learning Center on the computers? You had to cross multiply? I just, uh, some people made fa puking faces just now. Sorry about that. I went there. It's not as bad as you guys seem to think, no, actually. No, no, no. <laughs> I think it might not be entertaining, but... 
it's not like this is entertaining. And then you can go to the strategic planning meeting, and then you see, well, there are really bad things out there. Tangent x, um, well, I'm going to cross multiply. So what I'm going to do, cross multiply in case you are blocking out the Red Hawk Learning Center. What that means is you're swapping. See the arrows up there? You're swapping those two locations. So the tangent scoots up to the other side, and the minus 3.392 goes down to the other side. Cross multiply. Got it? So the cross multiplication I'm asking you to do is um, take the tangent and multiply it to the right, and take the minus 3.392 and divide both sides by it. So you're cross multiplying. So you probably did this in the Red Hawk Learning Center in some form or other. So does that look familiar a little bit, vaguely? Right. So you can do this with fractions if you, you can move them around like that across. Or cross equal sign. So multiply the tan multiply both sides by tangent. The tangents will cross out on the left side and it will appear on the right side. Divide both sides by the minus 3.392. So then if you do that, the that goes in the basement now. On the other side. But why did I do that? Because I don't have a one over tangent inverse button on my calculator. I have a tangent inverse button on the calculator. So my next move is to hit both sides with the tangent inverse. So step three is tangent inverse both sides. We, we've now reduced the problem to the same thing that we had with cosines. We have a key on, on our calculator that has a cosine inverse, so we're able to do that problem. I've changed and reposed the problem so that I have a key on my calculator that I can hit both sides with. So now I'm going to hit both sides with tangent inverse. And when I do that, I just tangent inverse tangent t is equal to tangent inverse of 1 over three, minus 3.392. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to lose it too. What's tangent inverse of tangent? What do they do to each other? They cancel each other out. So I'm always after x in algebra class, right? You keep finding x, and then someone makes the mess, and you have to find x again, and someone makes a mess, and you have to go find x again. That's all you do. There's x. And then you can crank that on your calculator. Um, I put, I, you know, if you're writing, taking notes, it's copied up at the top. Um, I just punched that on my calculator, and I think that I used a um, something on the internet just because I don't, ha I didn't have that 89 sitting in front of me, but it's around minus 0.289669, something like that. Now, on the, um, there might be more than one answer, and they'll ask you for one answer. I'll ask you just to give me that one answer from the calculator. Because to me, the purpose of this problem is to recognize that you don't have the button, that you have to transform this problem and use the red list, and then you go as, as forward as, you, as you're supposed to. So I don't want to mess around with finding another solution and all that stuff on this problem. I'll tell you. So you use the inverse tan just to get rid of the other tan. Right. Okay. And you couldn't do that to the beginning because there's no inverse cotangent button on your calculator. That's why you had to do this. Make sense? Yeah. Good, because I have some problems that won't make sense. This is coming up. <laughs> I like to start out with everyone happy. <laughs> That's what she said. She said she liked me the first, like, I thought you were a nice lady until you did the last thing. <laughs> Some of these problems are actually pretty easy once you know that unit circle, which is why I did the unit circle first. Can you imagine last semester's class? I did the unit circle like four weeks into class. <laughs> and they were very unhappy for a while. Um, so we have this problem 2 cosine x is equal to 1. And they have these two boxes. I'm going to show you what to put in both boxes. Step 1, solve for cosine x. Why? Remember, somebody makes the mess, you find x. We're looking for x, so we need to get everything around the x away from the x. So I get cosine x is 1 half because I just divide 2 out of both sides. So I just took this 2 cosine x and divided both sides by 2. So I get cosine x is a half. Then I just, this is a problem that I already asked you on the unit circle. You just, I think I already asked you that on one of the quizzes, two of the quizzes now. Just go to the unit circle and look up where cosine's a half. 
Well, that's why there's two boxes. They have two answers. If you go to the unit circle, it happens at pi over 3 and it happens at 5 pi over 3. There it is. Put it in the boxes. They're insulting your intelligence, right? These are too easy. <coughs> By the way, you can always check all of these on your calculator. You won't get, unless you have the 89, you're not going to get pi over 3. You're going to get a decimal answer. But it, you can match it up to your answer by just taking the number pi on your calculator and dividing it by 3 and see if you get the same thing. So you have a way to check. And if, you had, if I told you I'll give you the answers on the quiz, who would say no? Use your calculator to check. Number 11. That, boy, those answers look scary, right? <laughs> So this is one of these uh, WebAssign has boxes and they're set up. This is probably why you had a hard time in the Red Hawk Learning Center, why it wasn't that fun. Because when a computer asks you a question, they have to have a format so everybody's answering the question in the same way. So those boxes look really scary. We're going to first figure out how to find the answer, the real answer, and then we're going to figure out how that matches up to this WebAssign question. That, that's a different, it's almost like a different problem. So the first step in this problem, this problem is like the other problems, except what's, what's different about this one? There's a 4x inside the argument. It's on the inside. So before it just was cosine x. Now I have cosine 4x. That's what's different. So um, the first thing I'm going to have to do is just ignore the fact that I have a 4x there. And I think they want you to do something else, but this is the easiest way to do it. Where's cosine equal to half? Well, I just go to the unit circle. I just did that. Cosine's a half at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And then, where am I at? Well, that, well that's, th that's where that's equal to a half. I got that. Now, I wrote that up again at the top, so if you're taking notes, there it is. Step two is to set the inside of the cosine equal to that, what I found. The inside of cos the cosine is the angle, which is 4x. Set it equal to pi over 3 and to 5 pi over 3. That's the angle. I know that the angle is pi over 3 and four, 5 pi over 3. So set the angle equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Does that make sense? Okay, so think of this yellow that's here as the angle. This is the angle, right? We, are, we were looking for when cosine of the angle is equal to a half. We already found that. It's pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, right? So this yellow stuff is equal to pi over 3, and the yellow stuff is equal to 5 pi over 3. I should okay. make a little highlight here so you can see that that's what it is. Okay. Right? And what do you have to do in, al in algebra classes? Solve for x. Solve for you. Again. So then you just divide both sides by 4. 4x divided by 4 cleans that out on one side. Pi over 3 divided by 4, or, or with another 4 in the basement now, that's pi over 12. So I just took that and divided both sides by 4. So I get x equals pi over 12 from the first green. The second one is going to give me 5 pi over 12 by dividing both sides by 4. Good. Got it? Yeah. You slow it down. Have me on slow motion on YouTube, so slow it down. It's, it's, um, when you're doing the problem, you'll see what to do because you can watch right along. Okay, let's go back to those scary <laughs> answers. Recall that this is what was on the <laughs> thing. Um, well, I'm going to first look at that first. They want all, like every revolution around the circle, they want all of the answers. So I'm just going to look at this first answer that they give me here. It can't be right. They want all of them. They want like the first rotation, the second rotation, all of them. So this one can't be right because if n is 0, then I get x is 0 for both of these, right? And x is 0 doesn't fit into that. x is zero, Cosine is 0 is y. 
one, right? So X, this can't happen. So I can, and I know that it can't be these guys on the bottom because I'm supposed to get pi's over 12s, right? So these guys are gone. So I'm just, it's one of these three. It's not the first one. Now I'm to a 50-50 chance. N equals zero doesn't work. It can't be the second one because I'm supposed to get two answers. So it can't be the second one. So it must be the third. So I see how I checked off the third? That's just if you want to, if you're interested in putting it in WebAssign and seeing if you got the right answer. But it doesn't really matter to me about WebAssign. Just do it the way I showed you so you get the answers on the unit circle. Right, I, I'm doing this because this is the way WebAssign is asking you the question. So I, I, when you get to the answer, the answer that you, you got, that I just showed you how to get, which should make perfect sense, how are you going to translate that to the way they want you to answer it? It's not their fault, right? They have to ask you in a way that's computerized, right? So you can, or you can just make five mistakes and figure out what the answer is that they want you to select. But on a quiz, you're not... No, I'm not going to put that. No. I'm not a computer. <laughs>